Hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about impulsive behavior. Being impulsive means acting or doing without forethought, without thinking ahead. An impulsive act is not planned and the potential consequences of that act are not considered. Everyone has impulsive thoughts and impulsive actions at different times. Sometimes an impulsive action can be fun. It can be spontaneous. For instance, you might decide one day, I want to go skydiving. That's a great thing. But of course, you need to think through the plan, have an instructor with experience, so that that impulsive action, that daringness that you're willing to go explore, is done safely. Other times, the impulse can put your life or the life of others at risk for hurtful or dangerous behaviors. A teen should ask themselves, could someone get hurt? Is this consistent with my family's values and expectations? Will I regret this decision? Could I regret this decision? Sometimes acting impulsively is a result of negative social pressure. Someone does something and then you feel like you have to do it as well to stay friends or to be accepted. We wanna make sure that the actions that we take, for instance, these guys jumping off of a cliff edge into water, that looks fun, but that water might be two feet deep. If they're not sure and they just jump, that could be really hazardous to their life and their health going forward. Likewise, if you're acting impulsively to take a drug or alcohol, that can also have long-lasting emotional, physical, and psychological effects. Being able to predict potential outcomes is a sign of self-control, intellectual well-being, and maturity. Again, everybody has impulsive decisions that they make, and everyone has to live with those consequences. The more you get in the habit of being controlled, thinking ahead, and being mature about decisions, the better your outcomes will be over the course of time. In the decision-making models taught in health education, one step is to anticipate possible positive and negative consequences before you decide what to do. One strategy that may be helpful is to consider situations and potential outcomes of impulsive behaviors. What might happen if I throw this tennis bag across the court? What could be the result if I shoplift? What effect would I have on others if I join in bullying someone else? We want to make sure that if we put into practice ahead of time thinking, and we do that regularly enough, when an impulsive decision comes on our brain, we're able to have some sort of history of thought process to address it in the correct way. Being able to identify resources for emotional health problems involves having both knowledge and skills, as well as holding relationships with other people in your life. You need to know who your resources are and be able to access help from those resources. Resources include people like parents or guardians, other family members, teachers, counselors, doctors and nurses, your administrators, youth leaders, and coaches. All of these people are there and available to help you as long as they have your best self-interest in mind. The adult from whom one seeks out help should be trustworthy and able to facilitate assistance. You need to have relationships with people in your life and know how much you can trust them. The people you can trust the most are the ones you need to go to when a crisis occurs. These people need to have your best interest in mind. Whether they can keep the problem in confidence depends on what that problem is, meaning can they keep it confidential? Maybe, maybe not. If the emotional health problem involves danger to the young person, to you or to someone else you know, the adult has to get formal help for you. That means if something happens, 
that is dangerous to you or someone else. It is the law that formal help, the help of a doctor or a professional, is sought out by an adult there to help you. For example, you need to uh, put this into context. So thoughts of suicide always require a safe plan and follow-up care. If you seek help from other people, it requires being assertive and having the courage to reach out. It is never a sign of weakness to ask for help in a time of crisis. Everybody needs help in a time of crisis. If the first person you ask is not willing or able to help, you need to have the confidence to go out and continue asking people for help until your needs are met. Thanks a lot for listening today. Have a great day.